Teaching your dog to fetch different objects isn't just a fun game to play with your dog, it's also a really practical skill to help you retrieve various items. Uh, Keegan, can you get that for me? Thank you, buddy. Also, fetching different objects and bringing them directly to your hand is a great way to teach and reinforce a stronger recall. I have two young dogs who are not natural fetchers, and so I want to share with you the process that I've been going through to teach them fetching skills. If you want to be your dog's hero, then consider subscribing. On my channel, I share lots of different ideas on how to make life better for both you and your dog. Some dogs are natural fetchers and don't need training. Other dogs don't fetch naturally, but they can still learn. To use this method of fetching objects, you will first need to teach your dog how to hold an object. And I have a video for that, which I will link to at the end of this video and in the description below. But I would still recommend that you watch this whole video first so that you'll have an idea of what you will be working on and what you can expect to achieve. For training, I keep sessions short, often just a couple of minutes throughout the day and usually no more than 10 minutes. I use some or all of my dog's daily food allowance. My dogs eat a combination of foods, including some homemade recipes, some high value protein foods like chicken and fish, and some good quality kibble because I find it useful for training. When I'm training, I'll use things like chunks of chicken, dehydrated smelt or anchovies, dehydrated apple and cheese mixed in with the kibble. Raven has just turned a year old and when left to his own devices, he likes to run far away and stay at a distance. I want him to bounce back to me as often as he can so that this becomes a pattern ingrained in him. <laughs> Whatever a dog is repeating every day is what you can expect more of in the future. If I give Raven the opportunity to run far away and not come when called, then that's the dog that he will become. So instead, right now I keep him on a long line and we do games that Raven finds rewarding that involve bouncing back to me or staying close to me. Eventually, after many repetitions, this will become his new normal. Raven is not particularly food motivated, but he does like to work for his food, especially when he enjoys the game that we are playing. Fetching is fun for both him and for me. Remember that these dogs have already been taught to hold an object, and that is where our fetching training begins. In one hand, I hold the object, and in the other hand, I hold my dog's food reward. I ask my dog to take it, then hold. Yes, good job. Take it, hold. Then when he holds the object, I say give. Give, yes, good boy. Take it, hold, give. And I reward him with the other hand using the word yes as a marker to let him know that he did the right thing. Give, yes, good boy. I want them to give the object directly to me rather than dropping the object. I also want to encourage them to move towards me, so sometimes I'll move my hand a little bit behind me to get that forward movement. Or if I'm standing, I will sometimes back up. My objective is for them to want to move forward to me and push the object into my hand. Also, in general, I want him to default to moving towards me. Some dogs can experience pressure when we move our bodies towards them, so I'm teaching my dogs to move towards me instead in a way that makes them feel comfortable. Yes, good job. The next step is to put the object very close by, but on the ground. Again, I tell him to take it, Take it. Hold. Hold. And I say give. Give. Yeah. And I offer the food reward from the other hand after my marker word yes. You. That was awesome. I will use the same item a few times, but I will also choose other objects to work with at the same time. If my dog refuses the new item, then no problem. We can go back to the other one and then try something else later. <laughs> oh, it's a bit slimy. When you choose a new item, always start right from the beginning doing the hold and make it as easy as possible for your dog. A new item can be a new learning experience for your dog. When I'm using a new item, I try to make it a little extra exciting. So sometimes I use my voice to encourage my dog and I will also sometimes animate the object. When I want to challenge my dog a little more, I will do this exercise in a slightly more distracting place. So in this case, I'm in a section of my field that Raven finds quite exciting. 
He's on a long line to keep him close to me and I keep him engaged by being animated. If the location becomes too much for him and he can't focus, we go back to a location where I know he can be successful. Yeah. And again, Good. these training yeah. sessions should be short so that your dog doesn't get frustrated. When your dog becomes confident in picking up an item yeah. from the ground, you can progress to throwing the object a very short distance yeah. from you. It's tempting to want to throw far, but to ensure your dog's success, keep the distance close and easy at first. Gradually, you'll be able to throw farther away. Then you can start to reward with food a little bit less often, sometimes after every throw, sometimes every other throw, and you can slowly fade away the food rewards. But if your dog is like mine are, don't give up the food rewards too quickly and add them in from time to time whenever your dog needs some extra motivation. Most of all, make sure that your dog is having fun with the game. If you haven't yet learned how to teach your dog how to hold an object, then this is the video that you can watch next. Happy fetch training and see you in the next video.